Okay, hello everyone, welcome back to the New Hampshire Business Show. My name is Chris Pastrana, and today I am joined again with the lovely Hannah <laughs> of Blonde Bass Media. How's it going, Hannah? Great, how's it going? Thanks, Good. Thanks for having me again. Yeah, definitely, especially so short after last time. Oh, yes, definitely. Because I definitely wanted to have you back on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Christmas was yesterday. Yes. Which is great. Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Merry Christmas to everyone. Um, so let's talk a little bit for people who haven't seen your inter- your last interview. Let's talk a little bit about your business. Okay. So ultimately, I do social media for small businesses in the area. So I help them with creating their social media pages, creating um, posts, as well as engagement, likes, comments. Um, trying to get their brand name more consistent and online and just making sure that they're well known online and everyone knows who they are. So I, I really work with just the smaller businesses that don't have the budget to pay for the big agencies um, and work with them, personalize their plan and their marketing with them to make it so they have what they need in order to market themselves properly. Yeah. So. Cool, which is a huge benefit for businesses. Yes. Because um, I've been on, my computer's been all weird. I've been on like a stick lately trying to get people into social media and stuff like just like you do. Mm-hmm. And man, people do not want to jump into that. They're yes. like, yeah, we can do something else. And yeah. it's like, it's a fight. <laughs> no, definitely. I feel like people don't understand how important it is and they need to be reminded like why we use it you know especially for businesses like it's great for when you have personal and you want to keep in touch with friends and family but when you have a business it's now a necessity you have to have it it's not just like oh maybe i'll get it or maybe just because it's this industry no like you have to have it regardless of your industry and make sure it's consistently updated like that's your like face of your company online before they even go to your website they check out your instagram your facebook they don't a lot of people are on instagram and on all those other channels and that's what they go to first to see your pages so it's really important and no one like i guess a lot of people are still trying to grasp that idea and trying to understand why and what is needed to be done to get them to that point where people will know who they are and where to look for them yeah so yeah because Back when I used to sell cars, mm-hmm. I had a Facebook page just for me as a car salesman. Mm-hmm. Um, that's changed over the years. I forget if it's the same page. I just think I just changed the name yeah. to what it is now. <laughs> I forget. I've had so many. Yeah. Um, but yeah, everyone should have some type of presence if they <clears throat> if they want to sell or want to sell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they want to have a presence. So I totally agree with you. And they don't do it. People mm-hmm. don't realize how powerful it is and... They're just like, oh, yeah. I'll, if And if they throw something up, it's, like, really bad. Yeah. <laughs> like, so, I mean, just knowing, like, what's going to reach your audience in the right way and not, like you said, not throwing just random stuff, kind of thinking about strategically how these posts will affect your viewers and if they're going to be, you know, you know, kind of scared about it and, like, okay, I don't know if I want to follow this person or if they're going to be like, oh, cool, like, I love what they're doing and I want to buy this or I want to get this service. It's like you want to draw them in. So by posting, that's your way of getting people to know you, getting to understand your brand and what you're selling, and then also just feeling like they're part of a community, like they're part of your team because ultimately you're – you're posting, but you need to be personal and make sure that they're feeling like they're part of the family, part of the team. They understand like what's going on completely from the front end to the back end. They want to see it all. So I guess it's just really finding the posts that work and finding the posts that don't work and then making sure that that's consistent throughout and keeping people coming in and bringing more people from those people. So yeah, word of mouth, I would say. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. As we've said a couple of times already, people just mess this up all the time. Mm-hmm. And one of my biggest things is <clears throat> people, op- people like, I don't even know how to word it. They're not authentic with it either. Mm-hmm. And uh, when they're putting stuff up, you know, it's very easy to hide behind an image online. Mm-hmm. Be like, oh, yeah, this is, yeah, this is me. I'm, I'm super good at my job and I'm super good in my career. And yeah. 
in reality they're not or it's not quite where it should be so that's something to think about too is one if you have a page be authentic with who you are you know Mm -hmm. if you don't do a million dollars in sale a year don't tell people you do (laughs) so be real (laughs) on the level that you're at um, yes. I think that's my biggest complaint I see with social media because mm-hmm. um, as powerful as it is I think that is my only complaint with it is that people pretend to be mm-hmm. something they are not yes like, and uh, I totally agree with that because I one thing I always stress and I put it up on my pages plenty of times um, I am not a big believer of fake it till you make it <laughs> that is not my thing I believe that it works I guess for some people in certain industries maybe but for me I feel like being authentic is because everyone on social media can see right through what you're doing yeah they know exactly if you're being fake or if you're being real and you know you see it on with celebrities like they post pictures and they do you know photoshop everyone can see right through that you have to think of it like that it's like you have to really show your true self and be your true self know that you're gonna everyone knows as a business owner you're gonna have your ups and downs you're not gonna be perfect all the time you don't need to make it seem perfect all the time because actually people will appreciate the fact that you're being real and like listen like we had this you know we had this issue but this year we're gonna do really great we have these goals in mind like this is what we're gonna do to improve you know whatever you have to take your your weaknesses and turn them into strengths and just recognize that you have a long way to go and not just think off the bat that you're great and you don't need to learn you don't need to do anything else and that's one thing i've stressed like i'm always about learning and growing and not just like staying stagnant because you honestly could always be better regardless even the bigger companies that are making that money they're always trying to be better they're always trying to be out their competitors and that's what you need to do so i definitely am a huge huge person for like being authentic being transparent making sure everyone knows who you are and if they see you in the street and like meet you they'll be like oh wow like you're just how your posts are you know that's what i try to do i try to make put my personal spin on it so like when they do meet me like wow you said that the other day on your instagram page and i loved it and you just said the same thing like you totally go by what you say yeah that's huge i think that's really really big for me yeah i think that's really beneficial for everybody Mm -hmm. um I run into the issue where until I get talking, people just don't want to approach me because I look mean. <laughs> like, I kind of have that resting face that no, everyone's like, Ugh. <laughs> so I run into that issue, but I yeah. do try to represent myself online the same way. Mm-hmm. People understand I've not, I'm not going to say I have a short temper, but I can get moody. <laughs> it happens. That's okay. We all get cranky sometimes. We have a lot going on. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, that's just an issue I run into sometimes. Mm-hmm. But you're right. The stuff I post online is the way I'm going to engage with people. Mm-hmm. So I don't, I'm not talking about, yeah, I make billions of dollars. And yeah, yeah. here I am throwing pennies. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah, and I think it's authentic. It should be. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's a big point. Now, on to the point of fake it till you make it. There's a one area I actually agree with fake it till you make it. Mm-hmm. But generally, like you said, the idea of just making shit up is just bad. Yeah. <laughs> you shouldn't do that. Yeah. Um, but this kind of as a side note, this has nothing to do with business or anything, but um, looking to the future and like, okay, that's who I want to be in the future. Mm-hmm. And then currently faking it to be like that person, I kind of agree with. Yeah. You're trying to act like that person in the future who you want to be. Mm-hmm. If that makes any sense, I'm totally just winging it right now. No, I, I understand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, it has nothing to do with anything we're talking about, short of in that area, I think it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. not like with, with your business capabilities. I think that's kind of a bad route. And people misjudge probably what that is supposed to be. Mm-hmm. That's my idea. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Like, there's a, there's, there's a hustle and there's a fake it till you make it. You hustle to the point where people believe that you're what you are because you're working so hard to, like, show them that that's you know what you're trying to become whereas opposed to faking until you make it it's just like you literally just post stuff that you have all this money at your house or yeah. you have this huge mansion it's like no you don't <laughs> let's be honest so i mean and also just if you have you know different services different products make sure that that's what you have and make sure that's what you're portraying as you know your business because ultimately people if they find out you don't have those things you're just you're gonna look bad ultimately it's just 
being like really true and telling the truth and and not faking it to make it just so you can get more money out of people and then not do the job you're supposed to do. Yeah. So it's really just if you can do the job and you're working towards learning how to do that and you know you have a skill you're in mind in mind that you're trying to, you know, show off to people and you understand it, and you actually know what it is and how to do it, then yeah, go ahead. You know, if you want to say that you've, you know, you've been doing it for a while, but and you actually have experience, go ahead. But don't just put it out there and then be like, oh, I don't know how to do it. Actually, I just put it on my page and. <laughs> so, that's like I just I'm just so big about that, and I especially with like my pictures and my my quotes underneath my pictures, I always try to put my little touch on it. And even if I do repost, I always kind of you know take it from where they that person posted it and I'd be like you know this is how I interpreted it and like why I posted it so it's just for me if everyone knows who you are and if you're being yourself and they can see you right through it so you just have to make sure that no matter what you're doing in your business that you're always staying true to yourself because you don't have to be this person or that person you just have to find what works for you yeah so. that's pretty good yeah <laughs> so kind of bit of a hard change in base here. Let's go to uh, when you started your business. Mm -hmm. okay, what kind of led to that area? Because, you know, we know what you do, <clears throat> but I don't think we even talked about it last time. Like, what led to that moment where you're like, that should be what I do? Hmm. So, I would say um, I worked in PR for a while, public mm -hmm. relations, and I worked at a couple of firms. I lived in Miami for four years, and after I graduated, and I wanted to be in PR. I was so excited about it. I really wanted to do fashion PR, was which, what I really wanted to do. Yeah. Um, and work like in house at a designer's, you know, company or something like that. But um, it kind of was hard in Miami because Miami is a very different fashion world as opposed yeah. to New York or LA. So I was just kind of testing out the waters, trying to get my feet wet, and just like seeing. What, what works and what I, you know, what I'm good at. Um, so I worked at probably three firms in the course of two years because I was all over the place um, trying to just see. And I was, I'm just a person that doesn't settle. So if I don't feel like I'm the right fit for that company, I'm going to let myself find something else. Yeah. So I went through a few jobs and tried to like kind of see, you know, what I was good at and what I liked and what I didn't like. Um, met a lot of nice people on the way. Um, but one of the things I was able to do for some of the mm -hmm. the firms was I was able to do their social media for their clients or do their social media for just their pers their corporate pages. Um, so I kind of just tested that out and I was just like, I like really enjoy doing this. Like I think I could actually do this and not, you know, for me, PR was, it's a very difficult field and it's not something you, it's not as glamorous as people think it is. Um, so it's, you know, you have to be very um, aggressive, very able to get, you know, make sure your stories get pitched the right way to the right people and make sure you get media coverage for this event and make sure you get this press conference scheduled. You have to, you know, help with organizing events. It's a lot. And for me, I felt like I needed to be more specialized. Um, I went and worked for a makeup company that just started um, from the ground up. It was like a new pro um, makeup company and they're the first in South Florida. So they started in Hollywood, Florida. Um, I worked out of my boss's house for like six months. We built it from the ground up. We literally ordered all the product for the store, had it in our house, it was like putting it in the computer, like everything. I did it like everything. And I was, but I was hired to do our social media. So I was doing all of the work plus social media. So I learned from that how to like really market the company and I never been a makeup person either so like I was learning about makeup and how to market the right way and who were the big players and all this crazy stuff I was learning all in this job and it was literally my like mind boggling um so once the store was up and everything I was in charge of organizing the classes that we held um any events that we were doing any products that came in if we had a makeup artist coming to you know do um a feature or anything like that so I was always in charge of really presenting that to the world and trying to get them big, convince them that, oh, we're new, but we're really cool, you should come see us. Um, so I did that for about nine months and I actually had to move home because my apartment complex um, that I was living at actually 
or where I was living was sold, so I had to move out um, and decided to come back home for a little while and regroup. And when I came home, I was like, what am I going to do? Like, New Hampshire is not Miami. Like, you know, it's it's going <laughs> to be really not. hard. <laughs> yeah, it is the job um, that I want to do. It's just it's not that many PR or social media jobs, like, as much as there is down there or the kinds that I want to do, you know. So I was sitting with my dad at the table, and I was just like, what should I do? And then it's like, you know what? Like, you're good at social media. Like, why don't you think about starting your own business where you help you know, other small businesses for a small flat flat fee every month and you just help them with their social media, building it and posting every week and making sure that that's consistent because they don't have time for that because he has a business and he understands he doesn't have time. He doesn't understand it because he's an older gentleman. (laughs) So he doesn't, and my mom, same thing. She has her own business. She doesn't understand how to be consistent and make sure the content's, you know, going to get likes and going to get shared and everything like that. It's just a lot of knowledge that a lot of people don't have. So my dad's like, you should just help small businesses and, you know, make sure your your prices be other people who charge this much money. You want to charge this much money. Um, so I did that for a side job for a while. I worked at a full-time job, 8 to 5, and um, doing it on the mm-hmm. side was ended up being way too much. So I was like, one day... I just left, and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to dive right in. So I, I went in, and I now I, I have a turn back. I love it. It's, like, my favorite thing to do. I love learning and being on social. I actually am online a lot, probably more than I should be. I need to take a break sometimes, but it's, like, to me, I love learning about the big, like I said, the big players in the industries and kind of seeing how p- different brands, like, portray themselves because if you go on any type of beauty brand or tech brand their posts are just so elaborate and so they put so much thought and obviously they have graphic designers and everything you know that you would need to make them really great but they just have it all worked out in their minds how they want their brand to be portrayed so I I just love looking at other people's stuff and seeing what they do and um the trends and just see what other people are saying and it's just really cool and it's just like a community ultimately it's like if there's an issue in the world, like, everyone comes together on social media. And so I just, I love it, and it's something I probably will be doing for a very long time until, you know, we don't have social media, which I doubt will happen. I doubt it. Yeah. I, I can see the next step being social media directly in your brain, mm-hmm. kind of like a hive mind thing. Yeah. I can see that being where it goes, but for now, I don't think it's going anywhere. Yes. Um, I agree. Especially with culture the way it is. Mm-hmm. So... <clears throat> God, you're right. This isn't Miami. Uh, <laughs> no, it's not as warm, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, as the last couple of days have showed us. Oh. Uh, <laughs> but I started out kind of the same way, which is pretty cool. Um, mm-hmm. Just listening to your story, and when I was selling cars, when I got into social media because I was doing my own thing for the dealership, mm-hmm. and then I spiraled into realizing the dealership had no idea what it was doing. <laughs> yeah. And it wouldn't let me take the steps I wanted to go do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I left, and I started doing my own stuff and my own stuff, and kind of spiraled into this which is cool mm-hmm. so I, I like hearing your your story it's, it's i can relate to that yes. <laughs> people having no idea what they're doing and then just bleh. yes bleh, i got that <laughs> yeah definitely i mean i it's something i i love doing because i meet so many amazing business owners yeah. all the time and they're also, you know, they actually inspire me to, like, do better in my own business, and they give me advice, so it's kind of like, I'm helping them, but they're helping me, yeah. so I have really great clients that I, you know, they're my friends, they're not just my clients, like, I treat them like they're my friends, and I text them all the time, and I'll just be like, you know, we have, like, little inside jokes, and it's just really nice to, like, feel that we're not just working, we're, like, we care about each other, and, like, we want to help each other as much as possible, Yeah, and it's just... It's been so nice and, you know, also a learning experience, you know, over the year. I've I've been in business for almost a year and a half, and it's just, like, every, you know, couple months or or so, even every month, I feel like I've learned something new and how to improve and help other people. And that's my biggest thing is trying to help because I know how hard it is. And it's it's something you just need someone to be there to be like, you can take that because I literally don't have time for it. Like, delegate those yeah. tasks that you just don't have time for. So I just want to be that person that they can delegate that task to and just be like, 
you take care of it, I'm not going to worry about it, you have control over it, and I know you're going to do a good job, and that's what I want, and that's what I've always wanted with a job, so something I'm actually able to do is have more creative freedom, which I like. Yeah. I think creatives have that issue a lot with their, they run into the, they want to be creative, but they can't, Mm -hmm. because they're working for somewhere else, but on the flip side... When you're being creative, it's hard to produce money that way. Yes. <laughs> so I, I get that. I have the same issue in trying to figure out how to turn what I like to do, which is talking to people, mm-hmm. into money can be tricky. Yes. And then running social media can be tricky because people are like, uh, yeah. so I, I get that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's very funny. It's definitely hard. But, I mean, I feel like, you know, you have your ups and downs. You have to learn through different clients, like, what goes wrong and what goes right and go from there and see how you can keep that creative freedom going but while still staying practical and making sure that money comes in every month for you but um it's it's honestly a joy it's something I enjoy every I, I, even like when I'm you know I'm out and about and I'm or it's the weekend and most people are just hanging out or doing their thing on the weekend relaxing and I'm just always like wanting to know everything I want to be like seeing what everyone's doing on social media so like <laughs> it's like it's not even like for me a job anymore it's kind of like my life so yeah and it's just something that's grown to be a part of me which I love and it's I just hope that social media stays the same and doesn't change too much I know that we had an issue last I think it was a couple weeks ago I was like posting about like crazy on Twitter um about the net neutrality that was going on. I don't know if you heard about that. Mm-hmm. So I follow politics a lot. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not a big politics person, but that <laughs> one thing I was, like, freaking out. I was like, you can't make us pay for social media. Like, this is where we come together. And I was just, like, going off. So that's one thing that's always in my back of my head I'm always worried about. But hopefully that's never something that's passed because I feel like that's just that's just something that I just don't think should be taken away. Um, definitely could be monitored more maybe but not taken away completely no oh, i mean this is an interesting area to get into uh, so i won't dive into it too too much um did you know net neutrality started in 2015 so generally speaking um it was probably fine beforehand so i i don't see it being too big of an issue mm-hmm. so that was my only big thing about it but uh yeah because the the rules as they stood that were repealed like last week have only been in place for a couple of years, mm-hmm. so it hopefully shouldn't shouldn't be too much of a problem. But yes, yeah, no. because I get it. You know, with with industry the way it is, we kind of need it to be open because yeah. I wouldn't be able to do this if there was a whole bunch of you know price restrictions more than they have now. Yeah, and with you, it's the same type of thing because you can very easily kill industry by putting crazy regulations and prices and stuff onto it. So, yeah, I get that. And businesses won't want to go online if they have to pay for it. And exactly. They don't have the money to be spending every month on top of everything else yeah. just to be on social media. But that's, like, nowadays, like you, it, like I said, it's, like, you need to have it in order to market yourself unless you want to go back to traditional and be getting advertising yeah. spots and all the And that costs a lot of money, too. Yeah. So you have to, like, think about what would be better and then you're like well they both cost money am I really going to even need this should I just do word of mouth like should I just go outside and hand out flyers like what is you know what's the best thing that's the cheapest so when that happened it was just it was a frenzy online and I just remember following it and watching everyone and I was you know te- there was like numbers you could text to like stop it and I was texting all the numbers and I was it's just for me it's like to be that's like my like social media is like my bread and butter but it's also like my world <laughs> it's like i yeah. need it <laughs> so um <laughs> when that happened i was like freaking out but hopefully you know they kind of realize that it is really important for business owners more than anything to keep our economy going to keep them you know well marketed and and also just to keep communities together because a lot of people use it not just for themselves but they use it to you know for groups online to like help with you know different um, issues that people have. They go online and they grew, join these groups and they talk and they help each other out. Or even just like any type of interest groups that pe- keeps people in those communities, that keeps them, you know, 
those friendly communities that everyone likes to go to. It's like yeah. it's not just so you can go online and take pictures and post it from Christmas and like you know like your friend's picture. It's like so much more nowadays. So much more. Yeah. So it's like I really hope <clears throat> that it's something that's not taken away ever. <laughs> yeah. And actually, kind of history on social media, <laughs> the reason it exploded was because of a disconnecting communities mm -hmm. where communities weren't getting the same togetherness that they were a long, long time ago. Mm -hmm. So when social media came out, people were like, oh, you know, we can actually connect with each other and, and that's what people wanted mm -hmm. in a world that was becoming too disconnected. Yeah. And that's why it exploded. Literally, that's what they've shown over the years is um, as we, our lives get busier and they have been for generation after generation mm -hmm. and people are losing touch with each other, there was a feeling of <clears throat> disconnectedness that they wanted. Yeah. And then social media popped out, and then right there, just that's why everyone's like, "Oh, what did, what did Sarah and Jake, you know, have for dinner yesterday?" Because they don't have the time to go over for that meal anymore. So now they yeah. they do that type of stuff, yeah. and that's why it's so important. Because it literally was just like all capitalistic things. <laughs> yeah, it stepped in and filled a role that people were missing, and mm -hmm. and that's it. Yeah, so, I agree. You know. It's just kind of like a way for people to communicate where they wouldn't normally in their yeah. life, honestly. But it, to me, it's like better communicate on there than no communication at all. Yeah. And I, I've i dealt with a lot of different situations like that. I've joined plenty of online um, business groups for women and like their communication with each other, helping each other, liking each other's stuff and, you know, being like, hey, like, I need advice on this. Like, that is to me so powerful, especially like with women business owners especially like you know feel like we need to like be like a group and be helping each other and supporting each other because it's, it's a hard world out there especially as a woman and you need to work as hard as you can to you know band together and i love those types of groups those those groups what make social media like amazing and just like any issues that go on or if anyone if any type of you know problem in the world everyone just they band together yeah. on, on those pages, and it's just, it's beautiful. So for me, I just see it as more than, you know, the typical social media, what everyone, the older generations might see it as. It's it's really much more, and I I appreciate to have, be able to have it because it's, a lot of people don't have it. I don't think in a lot of different countries they're probably not allowed to use it, and so it's, it's really important, I feel, in our society nowadays. Yeah, and you're right, there are countries that, what you do on social media is very highly regulated, mm -hmm. like uh, China, <laughs> yeah. um, places like that, or North Korea, places like that, that either they're not allowed to, there are places you can't go, there's information that's directly censored. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I totally get that. I think some countries will actually arrest you for what you post online. Oh, wow. So <clears throat> that, that happens in Europe. <sighs> so crazy. it's very interesting to see, you know, how social media is played into our lives. And kind of do a soft plug on for something for you. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and it has a very cool social media group um, for businesses, so I'll, I'll link to it in the description. Check that out. <laughs> Please do. I'm trying to build it out. I want everyone to come and chat and try to help each other out, and build relationships, collabs. It's my favorite thing. I love yeah. collaborations. It's like my favorite thing ever. Yeah, especially if they turn out well. I've had a couple that haven't turned out well. Yeah. But generally speaking, when professionals get together, it's a really good thing, especially yeah. outside industries. Definitely. Even competitors. Um, just technically, she's a competitor. We don't work too much together anymore. We have a little falling out, but uh, I was doing a thing with another company here in Manchester, and mm -hmm. every time we worked together, it was phenomenal. You know, personal differences split us up a little bit, but yeah. um, it, was, it works really well. It's pretty cool. I like uh, almost competing side by side with yeah. <laughs> someone. Yes. I know fun. what you mean. I mean, it's, and the thing is, is my group I, I made was for people who are either too busy to go to networking groups in their area or people who, you know, are trying to, like, feel the waters and they're not sure if they want to start their business or if they are thinking they have an idea. It, it can be for anyone that really is, is an entrepreneur or a business owner or someone who just wants to get involved, um, freelancers, anything. I'm just trying to make sure we have a community of people from New Hampshire and from Massachusetts that can they're easily accessible and you guys can work together to build a community obviously but also be like oh like well you sell this well I do this and we can work together we can refer 
you know, um, business to each other, or we can do an event together, um, which also brings me to, if you've ever heard of Alignable, I signed up for it a couple months ago. My mom actually introduced me to it, and it's really cool. It's an all the, another way to sign up and show what your business does, and it's just a good way to communicate with other businesses. So that's also what I kind of copied my um, business um, group from. I kind mm-hmm. of saw what they did and how they communicated yeah. with each other. So. Um, definitely worth checking out if you if you have um, social media or if you just want to just do the alignable that works too. Pretty cool. Yeah. Awesome. So back to something I had said earlier. I forgot my point. I just remembered it. <laughs> yeah, New Hampshire is not Miami. So <clears throat> back to that point. <laughs> Besides the weather, um, very different markets, very different places to live, and some of the products I have, you know, that I do would fly super well down in like Miami or New York or LA a very type of markets for what I do um, especially my social media paparazzi because we have companies down there that would totally fly for something like that you literally have a person following you around with a camera taking pictures of what you do and then all of that gets put online social media in a way that makes you look like like a rock star you know? yeah. that would be that would fly off the bat down somewhere yeah. else now in New Hampshire what, we have the issue of a lot of companies that don't know how to use social media, <laughs> don't know what they're doing, yeah. and they don't have that big city style, yes. I guess. And I want to change that. That's why I started it here. Um, but, yeah, so that's the type of thing I notice is, yeah, we have very different markets. It, this year is going to be killer, though, because if I get, like, my big products running the way I want to, which I plan on it, um, <laughs> I want to see New Hampshire's market change a lot, which is why I've said this plenty of times. We were talking about being authentic earlier. Um, I say this all the time. I want to help change New Hampshire and completely change it around because I want people coming to the state being like, no, 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 you want a job? You want to make a ton of money? You got to go there. Yeah. But that's my goal. <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah. I want to change everything in this state. And, you know, you and I have talked about working together and doing collaborations and stuff like that. And I think moving forward, it's, this is going to be a lot of what we're doing is yeah. I want to make New Hampshire like the place to go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you want to be like, you know, screw Boston, screw Miami. Yeah. With the exception of the weather. Yes. You know, <laughs> we uh, gotta, we gotta head north. <laughs> yes. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. And people, I mean, they don't really know where New Hampshire is most of the time. Yeah, when yeah. I lived in the Midwest and then I lived in Florida, they're like, so wait, is New Hampshire in Maine? I was like, no, actually, it's below it. <laughs> like, it's just, it, it's very small. And, and I understand, you know, it's it's not very a, a big place to know about, I guess. It's not like we've, we've only had a couple big things happen. Um, and it's just... We have to kind of build it up and make people realize in New Hampshire that, yeah, we're a small state and we don't have big skyscrapers and all of the stuff that Boston or New York or anyone has, but we do have a lot of really talented people here um, that could do huge things. Um, yeah. and, and just there's so many business owners out there. Like, I learn every day there's new business owners around me. And I'm just like, wow, it's insane. Like, especially my age, like, they're always – the younger people that are coming up and they're trying to figure out their ways and what they're going to do. And yeah. So for me, just kind of making New Hampshire into like a business state, whereas, yeah. you know, we, we take everyone that does little, even if it's like little things that they do, if they make bracelets and that's what they do, make that into something where they can have a storefront, like allow, bring more space for businesses into the city, into Manchester, on Elm Street, where we have all that space open. I see it every time I drive down. I'm like, there's so many open spaces on this, and we can honestly, and I was talking to someone the other day actually about this. It's like, we're talking about like how, why don't we have stores, like shoe stores or, um, you know, different mom and pop shops throughout. We only have, you know, the bars and the restaurants, which is great. (laughs) That's fun. You know, but, and that's great. But we also have to keep, the businesses in mind too like you know and, and try to keep them on the forefront which is elm street and south Willow street and the bigger streets like where people can see them um and making it affordable so i definitely think new hampshire needs to become like a business you know where everyone's like you know what i'm gonna start my business in new hampshire once it gets bigger i can go to these big cities so it's like a startup where you can yeah. go and move to these bigger cities where it's like more people are there, you know? So I, I think we have a lot of potential in New Hampshire. I just think 
people are kind of scared. They, they're not sure if it's going to work or not. So to have this type of show and to have social media to help them grow and then be like, okay, I'm confident enough we'll get a place on Elm Street. That's what we need. We need to have that type of confidence in New Hampshire. Yeah. So that's what I, I really hope that that happens because New Hampshire needs the recognition and needs to step it up. Yeah. So. And I agree. And like I said, our, I think our goals are aligned there a lot because mm-hmm. um, that is why I do this. Yeah. So I can help businesses grow and do whatever they need to do. Um, and to get them some exposure yeah. and push them in a direction to be like, hey, because like you said, you can help businesses uh, with the social media and how, you know, they don't have to spend time on it. It, it really helps them. Mm-hmm. I can kind of point businesses in directions where it's like, oh, I need this. And I'm like, okay, we'll go see this person because mm-hmm. you know, I've, I've talked to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I know everybody. Seriously. Um, it's like, here, go go talk to this person she'll help you out mm-hmm. or he'll help you out or he'll do this for you and kind of do it that way and then like I said with with you and the social media and then some of the products I offer soft pitch for my own products here but can, <laughs> we can really make money yeah. online which is huge <clears throat> and even for like uh, not online specific stores mm-hmm. like some people are their businesses are only online yeah um, I don't have to cater just to that either. Yeah. So because of Facebook and all this stuff, you know, you can have a restaurant and I can drive traffic to your, you know, almost war, to your stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's just kind of a benefit of, you know, what we do and how we do it and mm-hmm. all that. And so it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? I don't know. But yeah, people <laughs> need to look at New Hampshire and be like, we need to go there. There's no sales tax. Yeah. I don't think we have an income tax. Yeah. Um, we need to work on the property taxes, and I'm going to have some politicians on shortly, and I'm going to pick their brains about why that can change. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but we're in such a good place where if we can generate more money, there's no sales tax or income tax. Like, even with the properties, if, because that's where a lot of this comes from, is it's expensive to rent or move mm-hmm. anything. So, yeah, <clears throat> when you're competing with people like Amazon and stuff like that, it's hard for a mom-and-pop shop to put something up Yep. If property taxes are so high. Yes. So they're like, how can I afford the rent when, you know, I have to keep my prices low? And it's just, it's kind of a balancing act. Yeah. So th- I think that is something we need to really address because if you drop those taxes, you know, whatever, for whatever you think about taxes, yeah. I don't like them, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, but that would, that would help out a lot, mm-hmm. uh, especially businesses. But yeah, anyway. So, yeah, we're in a really good position to have businesses do very well yes. in New Hampshire. With That's why most people come from, uh, like, Mass, Vermont, all those other places. Mm-hmm. They come to New Hampshire to buy stuff and yes. then they go home. And that would be perfect for, you know, a small business, you mm-hmm. know, that should be booming on the borders. Yes. So, I just agree. throwing that out there. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I definitely agree. I think that, you know, there's just... There's so much opportunity, and yeah. there's more people that are moving here from different places. Um, you know, like I said, the millennial, you know, job, um, I'm sorry, business owner, like those types of people are coming up, and they need to, you know, if they're looking to get a space, and they can't afford to pay what they have, and, and what we have on, on, you know, the main streets, which is where you want to be. Um, and just, I guess making it known that we're we're always open to new businesses and we're always trying to grow and help people and I think that's you know why we've you know obviously like you said we've gone into this business for a reason trying yeah. to help people um, so I, I just really hope for the future especially the younger generations that are you know coming into the workforce that there's going to be more jobs built in New Hampshire especially in Manchester since it's getting to be a big city nowadays yeah um and just keeping people here, but also building it out so that, you know, making sure people want to stay. Um, yeah. So I definitely think that's something that we need to make sure we can at least help make it happen and work with other people to make that happen. Yeah, I definitely agree. So we kind of talked a little bit about this, but moving forward, mm-hmm. you know, you and I collab a lot on different things and we will be moving forward here as well. Mm-hmm. Um, where are you looking to bring your business? Are you looking to bring grow to a point where you can have employees? Are you just keeping it small? Like, what are your plans? Um. So right now, I'm. If I could think of what I want to do for the future, it would probably be 
get maybe two or three other employees on. Um, keep it really small. And yeah. because I feel that if you're a small business and you're able to, you understand the small business yeah. idea. Um, so for me, I also, you know, I want to get some great people in eventually and grow out the services that we have. So um, besides social media, we do media training uh, for interviews or if you go to do an interview with the media, with um, the media, a newspaper or um, the radio station or anything, helping those people learn what, what to say and what not to say and be prepared for that interview. Um, also, we do, you know, blog writing. We do newsletters and email blasts. Um, cool. We do... Um, Actually, I just started working um, on helping in entrepreneurs dress and help them with their styling. So I'm, I'm cool. starting to do that too. So bringing them for shopping trips, helping them clean out their closet, figure out what pieces need to be put in, taken out, um, making them a vision board of what they need to look like to keep their their look consistent, um, depending on their industry and you know their age and everything like that. So that's really what I want to do as well as branch that out. So it's really like I want my business to eventually be like a one-stop hub for business owners, like where they can help. I can help them with their social media, but I can also do their other content that they need and then give them a good look at the end of the day so that they can walk around confident knowing that everything's being done, they look great, and the business is doing well. So I'll, that's really what I want to just flourish and build out and meet new people, create the community with my group that I have and make it a really big group. I really want to make it like a lot of great people in it and I want everyone to talk and help each other out. So that's another huge goal. I have a million, but that's like, those are like my main goals. Yeah. Definitely. And I was, cause you had said you were in fashion down in Miami, right? Yes. That makes way more sense. Cause I had heard before about your, uh, the, like the image consulting thing. It totally makes sense. Now that I know you did fashion and stuff. Cause me, no, I'm not very good at this stuff. <laughs> if it's not a black suit, like, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> yes. And that's the thing. Like a lot of people, they, you know, they're in, they're in business and, you know, if you're working for, let's say, my mom who, she's in a spa all day. She's not going to wear, you know, a suit or like a nice dress or anything. She's, she's wearing like yoga pants and a shirt. But when she goes to events, she needs to know how to dress the right way that would still represent her brand but not be like too much like corporate. Um, so for me, I'm just trying to help people understand what, how they need to present themselves when they go to these events or how they need to pre present themselves at their work if they're going to work, work where they have to dress up every day. Um, it's a lot because some people feel as, as if it's very overwhelming, especially when you have to do it every single day and you have to dress up every day and you don't know what to wear and you, you want to look professional but you're not sure what to wear, you don't have the pieces you need or, you know, in trying to keep that affordable for them too you know because yeah. that's another thing is like a lot of people can't afford to go and buy everything at macy's like we have to kind of go with the budgets and see what they can afford what they actually need not just what you know i think they need but what they actually need to like have in their closet to you know keep them as staple pieces so that they can use them with different pieces um so it's really just helping them out when they don't, like another time when they don't have time to think about their outfit. They have to think about what they have to pay and, you know, their employees and all this other stuff. That's the last thing they're thinking about. So with social media, it's another thing that just needs to be delegated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Image consulting. I like yes. that. Yes. <laughs> I like that. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a pretty good wrap up as far as, can't even talk, as far as what we're doing today. Um is I guess we already covered the moving forward thing. Is there anything else you want to say? Um, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> okay. How do people get more from you or hear from you? So you can check me out. Um, I have in my Instagram, Facebook. I just started my Pinterest. You can check me out on Pinterest. Um, obviously Twitter and LinkedIn. So we have those all in some Blomboss Media and you can check us out and also check out our group page on Blomboss Media on Facebook. So make sure, and also if you want, we have started our free content planner. You can get it online. Um, you can go onto my website, www.blombossmedia.com and you can just check it out. It's you just click the top link and you get this free planner where you can plan out your social media for the whole week. So it's free and 
it's really easy to use so definitely something to check out if you have a business or you need help with social media in general okay awesome Thanks. thank you so much Anna. it's thank been fun you. as always i love yeah. these little sit downs um <laughs> and there's always room to grow too so in the next six 12 months i'm sure i'll have you back a couple of times because yes, we have a do. we have a lot on the schedule and a lot of things we need to get done this year because it's going to be a hell of a year yes. so Excited. okay so thank you guys for, thank you so much for joining us um any questions reach out i'm going to link to everything like all the social medias in the description so just check them out if you if you uh when you want to reach forward <laughs> to reach out to hannah and uh until next time keep being awesome